When it comes to combat design in video games, specifically action or reflex driven ones, a lot of people will just automatically go with fast pace, meaning better. With the likes of Neo, Bayonetta, Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry, and so on. But for today's critical thought, I want to discuss how to make slower paced combat feel really good and give it that kind of meatiness that I like to see. The 2000s brought with it this very big period when it came to reflex driven games, and things certainly sped up quite a bit with God Hands, the Beautiful Joes, Bayonettas, Uncharted, and so on. But making slower paced combat feel good in the player's hands and feel balanced to play is a very interesting and tall order. Now, when we talk about slower paced combat, this is something that we oftentimes see in horror games, whether it's the uh, famous over the head, uh, hit him with the 2x4 from Silent Hill, to having your crowbar smacking head crabs in Half Life, or just the pick anything up and smack someone with the strategy of the Condemned series. But where developers tend to mess up when it comes to slow paced combat comes in two distinct points. The first is how it feels for the player. I have talked about the idea of gunplay many times here on the channel when it comes to first person shooters, but the feel of how the character in the game responds or interacts with the weapon is very important, even if we're talking about with melee. Now, a few seconds ago, I mentioned Condemned, and Condemned Criminal Origins is a really solid example of making slower paced combat work. This is a game where you can use anything from a fire axe, a shovel, crowbars, a locker door, or even just punching someone in order to deal with the enemies. Now, in this kind of circumstance, you want the player and the enemy to react really well to how these impacts are going. In a lot of fast-paced games, attacks come in super lightning fast, so the enemy may just go like, Ow, 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 ow. Or, again, something a little bit louder than that. But when we get to, like, heavier base combat or slower pace, you want every hit to actually feel like it registers. If you remember the famous Doom shotgun example, when we talk about gunplay, that iconic, when you pump the shotgun or you shoot in, that meaningness of that sound effect that drives home the point of using a shotgun, you can do something very similar when it comes to close range or melee based combat. That if I'm wielding a giant hammer and I hit someone with it, I don't want them to respond like this. Ow. Ow, ow. Ow, 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 ow. When I hurt myself, I keep poking <laughs> any more than that. When you hit someone with that, you want them to just go flying back like that. I have to make sure to talk after my mouth came back to the microphone there. But you want it to feel like the attack actually mattered. And that there is a difference between different weapon types. This is one of the big things that happened when we got to the Demon Souls Souls-like era of action RPGs. Where swinging a sword is different than stabbing with a knife. Which is different than using a spear or an axe or a club or whatever other weapon that you can imagine. And having these weapons kind of occupy the physical space of the world is a major point about this. Condemned is also really great in how the enemy reacts. If you hit someone with a super slow, super heavy attack, they don't just do this. No, again, they get sent back like at least two, three feet. And in order to kind of combat the player just to then try and stunlock them, these enemies will often respond that when they go flying back, They'll just immediately counter as they recover. And this is something that is done to prevent, again, the player from just stunlocking someone over and over again. Now, another aspect behind slower paced combat is the idea of doing input buffering. So, if you don't know what input buffering is, in games that don't have input buffering, that characters can kind of cancel out animations almost within seconds or milliseconds based on the move at hand. So this would be like going from swinging a sword, to then immediately holding up a shield, to then immediately, you know, hitting someone with a hammer. 
Like, there's no real transition between the different animations. They're just kind of interrupting one another. And this can lead to combat feeling a little bit like herky-jerky in a weird sense. When you do input buffering, what happens is that when you do an attack command, and the character is winding up for the animation and going to strike, if you hit another button in the middle of that animation, the game will kind of hold or buffer that animation, so that the second that the one animation finishes, the next animation will be queued up. And this does two very important tasks. First, it punishes button mashing. If you're just trying to hit every button at the same time, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to do an attack or a command that you didn't want to do. So just, just keep mashing the attack button, and then the enemy's preparing that super slow, but it's going to do like 80% of your health attack, and you're still swinging your weapon. The other point about input buffering is that it really kind of normalizes or standardizes the pacing of how combat works. You cannot attack or command your character any faster than the actual animations will allow you to do. And this allows everyone to be on the same page when it comes to combat and how one person strikes, another one strikes. And it's why this has been adopted by a lot of the more technical base action games and those that tend to focus more on slower base combat. Whereas if you're going for a more faster pace where you want the character and the player to be reacting almost instantaneously, this is when we typically see animation canceling. One of the biggest examples, of course, is the dodge cancel, where if you're trying to attack an enemy and you know they're about to do an attack, dodging, your cow will just immediately get out of the attack and hopefully get out of the way. Some games will be either more or less lenient when it comes to when an animation cancel can go off, or even if your game will allow it. Now, the other aspect behind having a meteor combat system or a slower pace is that the entire game has to be on the same page. And this is often when we get to kind of mismanage or imbalanced combat in games, where the player is super reactive and high speed, and the enemies are slow, they just do very little, or the opposite. And while this can lead to combat feeling very unique or different, it oftentimes ends up just not working right in terms of a fully fleshed out combat. If I'm super fast and speedy and everything moves like a turtle fighting me, where's the interest or the excitement? Even if you can't stun lock an enemy, let's say they all have hyper armor, well, if I respond three times faster than them, how are they going to hit me? Conversely, if I'm super slow, and it takes me like five seconds to lift up this double broadsword, and all the enemy has to do is come up and go like this, and knocks me out of the animation, well, that doesn't feel fair as well. And this is also why a lot of games, as a way to compensate between light, medium, heavy, super heavy, anime-style giant sword builds, is allow players to have, a, have poise or the ability to shrug off basic attacks. This was one of the big things that they try to do in the various Dark Souls games, in order to balance the fact that you're not going to be able to react as fast as someone who's using a tiny little dagger or a little sword. Now, when we talk about balancing combat, if the player is fast, the enemy should be fast. If the player is slow, the enemy should be slow. This is again why games like Condemn, and even recently with Scorn, I really enjoy kind of the weight of the combat. That it isn't about you just running around, shooting enemies, jumping like in Doom Eternal. It's about trying to get up close, get that perfect hit, wind up the weapon, and let it do whatever the heck those weapons in Scorn does. And the enemies react accordingly. They move as weirdly as you do, and when they get hit, they, you know, get knocked back or recoil as well. But just imagine trying to play a game like Condemned or Scorn, and you're fighting the enemies from Doom Eternal, or even something like Devil May Cry or Ultra Kill. It just wouldn't feel right. And this is also why, again, you want to balance how all these things work. What's kind of funny is that the super slow, very hard to perform 
heavy attack in some games may be just the quick attack in other games or the super fast one. It all again depends on what kind of combat system you're aiming for and how you want to balance it. But again, whatever you design the player to use or how they're going to react and fight, you want to make sure the enemies are balanced around that. Again, if the player is built on, let's say, parrying and dodging, and you design an enemy that is so fast that you can't dodge out of the way, or all their attacks are unparryable as well, then it just feels like you're breaking your combat system. And that's something you have to avoid when you're building any kind of reflex-driven game. Because if the player feels like the game is just intentionally cheating them, in terms of enemy designs and balance, a lot of people are just going to end up quitting out of frustration. So to wrap things up for the critical thought this week, you can do slow pace or grounded combat really well if you make everything have that sense of kinetic impact. That there is a difference between how you use different weapons and how enemies and even the player respond. And Again, if you want to have a fast enemy with a slower paced combat, that needs to be balanced. You can't just have the fast enemy attack and have the same stats and balances compared to that super slow, he takes like 5 seconds to wind up the punch before he actually throws it at you. And if you don't do this, it tends to leave combat feeling one-sided. And I've played games where the combat system will break for either side. Either I find that super cheesy ultimate build that just destroys the combat, or the enemy is just completely head over heels or completely above whatever I can do. And I don't have the means to get around that. And as one final, final point, you don't want to design an enemy that requires like pixel or hip hitbox, sorry, precise combat where let's say you can dodge you have like a kind of slower dodge or roll like in dark souls and the enemy when they attack they always attack in a string of four to five hits that unless you perfectly time the iframes between your dodge there's no way to get around it and you can design a game to have multiple defensive options like a parry repose block dodge stumble back, uh, duck and weave, or duck and roll, or whatever. But you need to make sure that the player has all the tools they need to fight and defend, just as the enemy can also fight and defend against the player. And when you come up with battles that feel very even-sided in this respect, it leads to far more interesting fights, and it leads to these combat engagements being far more meaningful as well. So my question for those of you watching this is, can you think of other examples of games that go for slow combat? We're not talking about Doom, Devil May Cry, Bayonetta. We're talking about kind of that slower, more methodical based combat. And did they do it well? And what are some of your favorite examples of it and why? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to do all that liking, subscribing, and commenting. If you're interested in my books on design, they are available wherever books are being sold. Come back for the discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where some of the art and science of games.